Welcome to The Warehouse. Has the Sunday sermon ever left you running to Google with new theological questions? Have you ever wished you could peer behind the curtain and see how a message comes together? That's where we come in. Here at Cornerstone Church, we spend hours every week talking about Scripture. This is the place to learn about passages, dive into their context, and study the Bible's cultural background. Come to The Warehouse, where we extend what you learn from the stage. Hey guys, welcome back to The Warehouse Podcast. Today I have with me Parker Robbins. Hello. Morgan Jones. What up? And me, I am Stephanie McCroy. If you have not listened to this before, this is all of our names. Parker's kind of just a new person for today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I I'm kidding. That. He's one of our <laughs> residents. He's been on here a few times with us. Yes. You but, can call me Parker too. Yeah. Or the other Parker is. Oh, I like Parker too better. <laughs> 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 that at least gives me, that like gives me some sort of identity. <laughs> <laughs> I still like the other Parker. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So our question today is, Morgan, what is it? It's our favorite. What is, so this was one that, so I used to work in a movie theater. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuttering to this question because this excites me actually. So <laughs> I used to work in a movie theater. So I've, I have like the slew of all of the snacks. So what is like your favorite movie theater snack? Hmm. Stephanie, you go first. I no, got to think no, about no, this No, 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 you go. Oh, mine's boring. Gosh. I would say just like a large popcorn and a large drink. That's consistently what I get. Mm -hmm. And then like on a bougie night, I'll get um, Airhead Extremes as well. Ooh. And I'll mix it like with the popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Do you put butter butter and salt on your popcorn? Yes. Okay. And I made that sound weird. I made it sound like I dump my Airhead Extreme That's what squares into the popcorn, which honestly, that doesn't sound awful. It does. But... <laughs> Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> but I like I eat a piece of popcorn, and then I eat a Airhead Extreme, and then I take a drink of Dr Pepper. Oh, yeah, it's you have a system. It's extremely unhealthy, and How I feel awful by the time the movie's done. But like, I don't know, that's just what I've always done. So, how do you guys feel about the new like Coke machines? I mean, they're not new; they've been there for like ten years now, but they're new to me. <laughs> yeah, they stink. I hate them. Yeah, they're not good. Why they're do you guys hate them? They're not as good as they used to be. It's just not as carbonated. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. The flavors missing. off because I don't know. Really? It's, yeah, something's missing. I miss like the the real soda syrup. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd agree. I didn't realize they were different. Oh, so oh, different. Dude. The heck? <laughs> You're missing Come on. Out, Parker. Yeah. Come on, get it together. Dang. Okay, so my favorite movie theater snack would be Reese's Pieces mm. with buttered popcorn. And I am dumping that in there. That makes more sense because it's chocolate, not like sour. I mean, I yeah. I'm bigger, not clicking home. with why this makes sense, but that's okay. <laughs> if people like that, that's that's good for you. Sweet and yeah. salty. Yeah, I guess. Think about like yeah. the, how they have popcorn that like they put chocolate on it. You yeah, know? I've heard of that too. I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you can does not mean you should. I disagree. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I agree to disagree. My favorite snack is, so I love the icy. I'm like a little kid, get a Slurpee, mm -hmm. whatever, mix all the flavors together. It doesn't matter, red, blue, if they have the Coke one, that's delicious too. Mm -hmm. Just love the, the white the icy. One? Yeah, sure, the white one. They're all there. Yeah. If they have the it, put it in there. Drink it. It's good. Um, and I also was always a really big fan of a uh, hot pretzel with nacho cheese. Mm. Mm, that was so good. But they started changing it at the movie theater in Mount Vernon. It used to be like a real pretzel mm -hmm. that they would actually butter and salt in front of you. And then they just started doing these little pretzel bites that were like pre-frozen, pre-whatever, and warmed them up and they weren't as good. But, but yeah, I love it. Pretzel, Slurpee. Of course, you got to get popcorn. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm spending like a hundred bucks here for snacks. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no candy? Uh, I don't like candy at the movie theater as much. No, I'm more of a savory guy at the movie they theater. They do have those cookie dough bites. <gasps> those are good. Yeah, cookie dough bites are good. I forgot about those. I have to save money somewhere, so I think I just cut it off at the candy since I already right. bought like four yeah. meals. Why spend the, 10 more yeah. dollars? Yeah, right, right, right. Did you see that they have like healthier <laughs> options at the one in Carbondale now? Why? I don't know. There's like kind of like a healthy section. It's That's kind of what's in it: yeah. broccoli, carrots <laughs> with some ranch dipping. They got like the cheese wisps. You know what I'm talking about? The little crunchy the wisps. Wisps. Casey's <laughs> 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 over there going. Ooh. Yeah, I know. They ha they're like the the baked 
pieces of just like little wafers of cheese. Yeah. They're delightful. Mm, oh, I love them. do you pay for those at the movie theater? I've done it like a couple of times, but wow. you can just get them at like Walmart okay. or something and like yeah. eat them at home. <laughs> yeah. That seems <laughs> like a cheaper, cheaper option. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm, how are we going to bring this together with... Oh, there is no connection. You just have to jump in. <laughs> are you sure? I think yeah. we could be like... You could try. It would be very forced. Mm. Mm. Guarding ourselves from spending too much money at the movies. We don't... I don't know. I don't I don't have it. <laughs> okay. So we are in week four of Guard. Um, we're going through Mark 2, 23 through 28. Um, this week, actually, Nathan will be doing a teaching, which will be great. And nice. that's why he's not joining us on the podcast mm-hmm. today. So last, oh, well, last time you were with us, Parker, Morgan was out because he yes. was teaching. Yes. Nice. I missed him. You're just Mr. Replacement. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay. I used to yeah. be Mr. Mm-hmm. Replacement. You were. Aww. Yeah, so maybe eventually you'll move up. No. Oh, Probably not. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, I thought of a good transition. Okay, go for yes. it. Because going to the theater sometimes brings you rest. Oh, yeah. look at you. That's why we thought of What this are we question. talking about That's today? Lie, but we're talking about Sabbath. Hey, there yeah. it is. I love it. Mm-hmm. Good job. Yeah. All right. So what <laughs> is your big idea, Morgan? Mine is very simple. It's God wants us to rest in him. Huh. Hmm. I didn't have one, so I just stole Jesus's from this text. The you Sabbath stole- was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I got it now. (laughs) Um, And then mine was, uh, God created Sabbath to benefit humanity, not to dominate humanity. Nice. Thanks, Mm. guys. All right, context. I think you're going to knock context out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit, but you had the bulk of it. Yep. And I'll just hop. (laughs) Add to yours. (laughs) Okay, sounds good. So among the four Gospels, Mark was the most neglected by the early church. So although all four Gospels are technically anonymous, early church tradition attributes the second Gospel to John Mark, likely due to his close association with Barnabas. We see that in Colossians 4.10 and um, his mother Mary, a prominent figure in the Jerusalem church, Acts 12.12. And this attribution is likely accurate as it it's improbable that the church would invent a tradition where rel- this would be like obscure for them to even think Mm -hmm. it would be him Mm -hmm. um because there could they could have picked somebody else that would have been a better yeah which makes a lot of sense like they they wouldn't if they wanted this to be a story that everyone believed Mm -hmm. and they were you know they were making it up they would have picked somebody that would have been way more prominent than this guy who is pretty much not a nobody but close to a nobody right 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 yeah um it is by far the shortest of the four gospels 90 percent of its stories are found in either matthew or luke Augustine considered Mark to be a mere abbreviation of Matthew and Luke. And also Mark's gospel differs from its counterparts with less like polished and it lacks an elegance where Luke um, and Matthew are more thematic. And um, Mark is known for like the, its problem passages. Mm-hmm. So where? So ahead. you're saying that like Mark is a, is like a shortened version of Luke and Matthew? Yes. Gotcha. Um, and so most scholars say that key sources came from Mark's gospel mm-hmm. and Matthew and Luke used Mark's gospel to help. Yeah. Flesh like, it out more and yeah. all of that. So we're saying that Mark's came first. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Sweet. And then, um, so his gospel is also structured around two main themes, the identity of Jesus as Messiah and Son of God in the first half of the book. So we see that Mark 1 through 8.30. And then we see the mission of Jesus in the second half, Mark 8.31 through 16.8. Yeah, um, something I said yesterday. um, Whenever I heard people say that Mark was heavenly, (laughs) was heavily influenced by Peter, I never like got an answer that I was like satisfied with. So I kind of dove into that a little bit. I really Um, liked how you did this too, by the way. It was really like good for me yesterday to hear all the things. Well, uh, like I said uh, last week, I got, I get a lot of my information from the ESV study Bible, which is a great resource. I really highly recommend it. Um, 
And there's two evidences towards uh, Peter's, like, basically influence in this. Um, a lot of it's actually evident just from Papias, Bishop of Heropolis, which was uh, preserved by Eusebius of Caesarea, who was a, like, a, one of the early church fathers, just affirming that, like, Peter, Peter was the one that was, like, kind of in charge of this and how John Mark was just kind of his scribe. Mm -hmm. um, and Papias was alive around 120. So he was, he was around like right around that time, mm -hmm. you know, or right after they would have been, you know, probably putting this into some sort of like um, finished work or something. Um, and then there's just the practical uh, aspects of, uh, of Mark. So there is actually very similar structure um, in Peter's Caesarea speech in Acts 10, 34 through 43, and the Gospel of Mark. So they're very similar mm -hmm. in structure. So there's that. There's also the fact that um, Mark's Gospel is uh, very detailed when talking about scenes with Peter. Mm -hmm. And then also it talks noticeably about the weakness of Peter and the other disciples. And it, it actually goes out of its way to kind of like omit praiseworthy scenes of Peter um, that Luke and Matthew reference quite a bit. So it's almost like he didn't want to like bring too much praise to himself. Mm -hmm. So, but then Luke and Matthew, they, they were more willing to like add those sections because, you know, if you were writing something about Jesus, you don't want to bring yourself praise, mm -hmm. you know, and we see that character in Peter a lot. So. I so, thought that yeah. was really cool that you brought that part up yes. um, yesterday. Just the idea that I was thinking about if I were writing a story and I was involved in it, that I would be less apt to put like this, like I wouldn't want to talk myself up as much. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what you see in this is, I mean, the bad stuff's getting drawn out of it, which is what we tend to do as humans. A lot of time when we reflect, we're like, oh, I messed up here, I messed up here, or I wasn't perfect in this situation. Mm -hmm. We don't tend to look at the positive. So it's like a very human thing. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I loved that. And I think adding on to that a little bit, and <clears throat> I just thought this was super cool, was that Mark's, like Mark being so close to Peter, um, it just, it's fun to think of. This isn't necessarily true, mm -hmm. but, you know, there is some extra biblical stuff that pointed to Peter intending to put down all of his experiences and his memories of Christ at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and being so closely associated with Mark he probably passed all these things down to him. So in theory, this is kind of like a, a Peter's gospel, um, mm. which is, is just kind of cool to think of. Like it yeah. is Mark's, but at the same time, a lot of this stuff came from Peter since Mark wasn't the eyewitness of all of it. Mm -hmm. And he was getting it from other people and probably a lot of it from Peter. Yeah. Yeah. That's just so cool. Pretty yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it would have been written around mm, between 60 and 70 AD, right? Yeah. We said um, this is the first one ever written, right? Yes. Like, Yep. Mm -hmm. Mark was the first gospel. Yeah, which also points to a lot of like what you were saying about it being kind of choppy and not all polished. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If it's the first one, it's probably the first of its kind of mm -hmm. all these stories being put together of Jesus. Like Mark was the first one like trying his hand at like mm -hmm. writing a gospel, which I think yep. is also cool to think about. Like that's why it's a little shorter, mm -hmm. why it doesn't seem as flowy um, as maybe like a Luke's does where there's all yep. this time and pulling from other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like Mark was just, he was kind of like a, a, the first guy to really try mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah. And if you think of it from, I mean, this is totally speculation. It's not, this is just Stephanie, but if they did have, um, like Luke was using Mark's as a referencing point and knowing that Luke mm -hmm. was actually like a huge researcher mm -hmm. and he sees Mark's stories and he's like, Hey, actually I want to go find out more information yeah. on this, mm -hmm. that this happened and using that as a touching point. Right. So again, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's what yeah. it is for sure. Yeah. But that's it. That's what the ESV study Bible oh, points cool, cool, to. Cool. Um, it, it shows, it talks also about early church tradition as well. Um, talking about how it, Peter was like writing it in Rome and all of that. Um, and it was written before Luke's and Matthew's gospel. So, um, so that's kind of just with the context of Luke and Matthew, mm -hmm. like it all, it all just seems like it points to, they were, they were tr getting stuff from Mark's gospel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So more immediate context. Um, there's a key word throughout the first half of Mark's gospel and it's authority. So everything Jesus does is with authority. We see that in this text um, that we're getting ready to dive into. Mm. And this is also the fourth of the five controversies that Jesus had with the religious leaders. 
The first one is whenever his claim to be God and forgive sins. Um, and then the him to be associated with sinners. And then criticized him for not adhering to the fasting traditions. And now this one, they're upset because of the Sabbath. Um, so we see that in this story and then also in the beginning of Mark 3, 1 through 6. Yeah. With mm-hmm. the healing of the paralytic man. Which in that chapter is whenever they the Pharisees are like, okay, now we've got to figure out how to get rid of this guy mm-hmm. by the end of that verse. Right. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is fairly important with this is maybe you don't know exactly what a Pharisee is, like what the like what they really did. So Pharisees would have been these really popular Jewish leaders who would have been connected to a local synagogue. Um, people would have looked to them for teaching, and mm-hmm. they would have been known as people who knew the Mosaic Law in inside and out, like the back of their hand. Um, mm-hmm. Could recite it, would would have read everything, you know, a hundred times over. I mean, like this was their jam. Like they knew what the what their Bible said. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the one of the things that I think is interesting about this is through those oppositions that Stephanie was just talking about, is all of them have to do with opposition to these Pharisees, like Jesus and his disciples and the Pharisees and the way that they viewed his, that he was acting as rabbi, as teacher in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting to see that these are the people who um, they would have known everything. They would have been super smart, mm-hmm. super educated. Mm-hmm. And like, they're looking at the way Jesus is doing it and they're, and what we know about Jesus, but they're looking at him and they're like, what in the world? This dude is not doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. This goes against everything that we um, have been teaching. Um, And also like they had a a really, like they had a knack for creating these extra traditions. So that's what we're going to see in our passage. So just the context behind that of one of the things that they had a ton of was extra Sabbath laws. Mm -hmm. So we know that they were that the Sabbath was a commandment and it was something that they were supposed to follow. But the Pharisees would take, they had like, all, I think, what was it? 39 extra things that had to go into um, the Sabbath of like rules to follow. Mm-hmm. And it was like all kinds of little stuff about how many sticks you could carry yeah. or when you could tie a knot and when you couldn't tie a knot and mm-hmm. what was able to happen on the Sabbath. And none of it, none of it was actually what God had commanded them to do, but it was stuff that they had devised and came up with that made it go beyond the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, was it, somebody brought it up yesterday about how you couldn't carry things with your hands, but you could carry it with the back of your hand or your yeah. foot or yeah. your ear. Yeah. Like That's it was like ridiculous things yeah. that you probably couldn't do. But I would love to see somebody try to carry something with their ear. Yeah. Well, didn't you also say that they could like tie stuff to their hair? Oh too? no, I think I was just joking. But that was <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> I mean, you never know. They had well, some pretty long hair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things that I saw was like the, when I was talking about tying a knot, so they couldn't tie a knot on the Sabbath. Yeah. So if they were had to bring something up from a well, like they wouldn't be able to tie a rope to it, but it was permissible for a woman to like tie her girdle or tie something around her dress. Mm-hmm. So they said the way that it would be done traditionally is a woman would tie the bucket to her dress mm-hmm. and that's wow. how they would pull it up because mm-hmm. weren't allowed to actually use a rope that day. But they yeah. could, you know, it's just which so. just defeats the whole. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like work. <laughs> You're working harder, not smarter. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was more about like what they saw them doing, mm-hmm. and like rather than like the actual process of what they were doing. Yeah. <clears throat> Very legalistic. Do you guys have anything else before we hop in? Um, Jesus, he's very established at this point. Yeah. Um, just like you said, the four, the four what's. Controversies. Controversies. This is the fourth out of the five. Yes, yes. And uh, so, and also on top of that, you know, he's called multiple disciples with him that we've seen. He's rebuked many demons. He's healed publicly. He's preached in multiple towns to this point. Um, And he called the tax collector to follow him, Mm -hmm. you know. So obviously the Pharisees do not like that. Um, He's cleansed a leper. He's healed paralytics. So yeah, he's, he's well established at this point. And he hasn't called this this specific 12 yet, correct? This is just a whole bunch. It's not until the end of chapter 3 where he appoints right. the yes. 12. Yes. All right. Anything else? I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all I got context. Morgan wise. is actually going to read for us today. Cool. And we're going to read the whole song. 
Oh. <laughs> the whole oh. chunk? Yep, there it is. I don't know what <laughs> word you're going for. I'm going with for... chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was going with section and chunk, and it said sunk. Okay, we're going to read the whole sunk right now. Let's, <laughs> let's dive in. So starting with 23, one Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, and how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat? And also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not the man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Boom. You did so good. I, I can read. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> good job. <laughs> you did so good. Oh, also, just really quick. Shout out to Haley, our receptionist. This was yes. a bad place for this. You could have done this at the end. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to do it right in the middle so okay. then we know she's like really paying attention. Oh, oh it's just gotcha. a test. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. Fair enough. There's the thing in scripture about testing your friends, right? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. 23. What you got? Hmm. All right. So looking at 23. So right here we have them going through the grain fields and they're um, plucking these heads of grain. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that the ESV pulls out is that there is, so there was a law against, or not against, but like for, like how you could take um, grain from a neighbor's field uh -huh. or like a neighboring field or something like that. And you couldn't do it. Um, I, I think actually, let me pull it up real quick. Yeah. So you it says you go into a neighbor's vineyard you may eat your fill of grapes, as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in your bag. If you go into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not put a sickle to your mm -hmm. neighbor's standing grain. So this is in Deuteronomy 23, and it's mm -hmm. the last two verses, 24 through 25. Um, so the point of that being like there was a way, it, what they were doing wasn't illegal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What they were actually doing was legal. They're just plucking it with their hands. You couldn't use like a harvesting tool. You mm -hmm. couldn't bring an extra bag to like stuff it all in there. Mm -hmm. This was like the idea of just passing through. Um, you were hungry. Um, you just grabbed a couple off and grabbed a handful and you moved on. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like the setup of what's going on and what's happening in verse 20, 23. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Sabbath is um, it ran from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, and they did evening to morning. Um, like their days were considered evening to morning, and so they would do full twenty four hour days. Mm -hmm. mm. Gotcha. Yeah. So Sabbath was commanded in Scripture. We see that with the Ten Commandments, um, mm -hmm. and then also more fleshed out in like Leviticus. Mm -hmm. With the Mosaic laws. Yes. Um, so it says that, that his disciples began to pluck heads of grains. Um, the Pharisees would have considered this work, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we talked about this yesterday. Um, was that something that they added in the ta in the ta ta Talud? Talmud. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, we had a conversation. So during like... The closing of Old Testament into the New Testament, there was this mm -hmm. time period where I think it was the Mishnah was created, right? And then, then there's like a whole bunch of little books that went into it as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak on that too much because I yeah. feel like I don't have enough yeah. information to but Yeah, say no, it. this was definitely something they added. So this is kind of what I was getting at earlier with the context piece mm -hmm. of they took something that was just you know, Sabbath, and they added something yes. to it. Of, mm -hmm. So you can't do this on this day. So they added to this. Now yeah. the the rule of like when to pluck and that kind of thing, that was like something completely different. But this was added. Like they're, mm -hmm. the fact that they're talking about it on Sabbath when you get into verse 24 was they were saying that what they were doing was wrong because it was on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So their um, the contention was not what they were doing um, it was that when they were doing it right. was wrong. Sure. Which we can go ahead and add 24 into that. So I had, according to the Pharisees, um, the disciples committed a double offense, firstly, by walking more than 1,999 paces, 
And secondly, by engaging in reaping. So mm. the plucking. Yeah. And I think Nathan said he found something where it possibly could have been corn. Um, mm. One of the other passages I had, it, it said grains as well. So it, mm-hmm. which could also be corn. Yeah, like I just, the grains meaning. Yeah. 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 I'm like, but I can't imagine eating a corn on the cob, just <laughs> not cooked. How does raw wheat taste? Is it good? I don't know. Didn't Nathan say that he's had raw wheat before? I think so. I I was listening via like video call yesterday, so I was kind of struggling to hear what you guys were talking about in that part. But I'm pretty sure Tia like makes her own bread. She does. Yeah, and she like grinds her own grain. So Nathan was just like, I wonder what this tastes like. And yeah. I'm pretty sure he was like, it was awful. <laughs> yeah, not great. Yeah. But <clears throat> if you're if you're pretty hungry, you know, like you'll eat just about anything. <laughs> Yeah. So one of the things that's happening here is so you see the question of like, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So what we know and like just big picture, we know that what they are doing is completely legal. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees objection is that it's happening on the Sabbath. So Jesus isn't like condoning this action um, as because he never violates God's commands, mm-hmm. um, Jesus would not do that. That doesn't make any sense. Um, like if you just think about it, like that's just illogical. Jesus is not going to directly violate a command from God, um, but he will. And what we see oftentimes is he will break man's like legalistic additions yes. to mm-hmm. God's mm-hmm. law, yeah. um, which is something that you see in all of those. Um, those those five things that Stephanie was talking about, like this is most of it that they're upset about is the additions that they've added onto it. And mm-hmm. Jesus is like, hey, that's not what God said. This mm-hmm. is not the heart of it. This was not the actual law. So mm-hmm. we don't have to follow that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you guys have anything else for 24? Nope. All right, let's add verses 25 and 26 together. So in verse 25, we have where he says, have you never read? So basically Jesus is, I mean, I'm going to say like calling him an idiot, like Mm. these people (laughs) who are supposed to be super smart, know all of the word of God. Um, And he's like, okay, have you not read the story of David? Like when he was in need and he was hungry and he and those who are with him they entered into the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which that's a big no-no. Like mm-hmm. that, the bread of presence was only lawful to, for the priest to eat. It wasn't lawful for anybody else to eat. Um, and also David lied at that time to get that, um, mm-hmm. to get the bread yeah. to eat. But there, so you found, was it you who said, well, weren't the disciples like really hungry walking through the grain fields? Yeah, well, I said that whenever I like usually like just read that, I just assumed they were really mm-hmm. hungry if they were going to eat on the Sabbath. Um, and I'm pretty sure one of the other synonymous gospels, Matthew, yes. right, says that they were hungry. Yes. Yeah. So they were they were in need, like they were hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, if if wheat doesn't taste that good raw, they must have been. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it seems like, but but yeah, um, and that's kind of. That was kind of my own personal tension that I was uh, kind of thinking through yesterday. Um, Whenever Jesus was talking about uh, David and what he did, was he saying that what David did was like right that he did and that it wasn't sinful, right? So basically like in the case of need, actions are allowed on Sabbath that otherwise might not be permitted. Um, So that's why the, that's why he allowed the the disciples to eat grain Um, and I kind of want to talk about that a little bit because that was a good conversation Mm -hmm. that we had. Um, How would you say we landed on that? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I was very confused during that whole section. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I think everybody in that room could tell. I was like, wait, hold on. What? Yeah. And so I don't want to misspeak for anybody. But Mm -hmm. um, for me, I kind of took it in as that way is like, okay, well, the need of the person meets, means more than the breaking of the law, but there was actually no breaking of law for the disciples, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. So, but for David, that would have been breaking a command of the Lord because the Mosaic law would have already been in place. We see that in Exodus and then even more in Leviticus um, of talking mm-hmm. about this, of what they are allowed to do and not do within the temple. So I'm like, okay, so then why is he bringing up this David story? Mm-hmm. Like, is it... To say like, hey, David was allowed to get away with this. Um, 
why are you guys not making a big deal about David? Mm -hmm. But yet you guys are making a big deal about this. Mm -hmm. And that comes from because uh, thinking that like the Jewish people at the time, like they cleaned David's temple. They still kind of like not worshiped him, but Mm. his tomb. His tomb. Oh, yeah. yes, I said yeah. temple. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but like washed his tomb and yeah. made sure it was sparkling clean and all yeah. of that. So they still looked at David as like this, like like the golden era uh-huh. of, of Israel, you know. And then obviously there's areas in David's story where he messed up and scripture doesn't hide that. You know, when Nathan called him out for um, the prophet Nathan called him out for, um, Thank yeah, you. yeah, not, not pastor Nathan. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what did he do? <laughs> when the prophet Nathan called David out for what he did with Bathsheba. Yeah. So obviously the Israelites knew like this guy wasn't perfect, but they still like, they still really like talk about him as if he was like the greatest to ever lived. Mm-hmm. It almost seems like, so it's like, um, Jesus is almost like saying, you know, you let that pass. Right. And but you're you're arguing about this tiny little thing mm-hmm. right here. Like he takes it a step further by going back to David, who actually did something that actually like possibly broke the law. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember. Did we actually say that he broke yes, the law? He, we did. I think so, because we see in Exodus is whenever God gives all of the laws for yeah. like who is supposed to be doing what within the mm-hmm. temple. Yeah. And then we see it again within Levitical law. Yeah. Gotcha. So the the bread of the presence was like uh, it was 12 loaves of unleavened bread that mm-hmm. was given to represent like the 12 tribes of Israel yes. and only the priests were allowed to eat that bread. Yeah. So yeah, in this argument, like Jesus takes it a step further by saying like, you guys, you guys don't talk about this, you know, mm-hmm. but you're making a big deal about the fact that my disciples are picking grain on the Sabbath, mm-hmm. like, which wasn't even breaking the law in the first place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you have more again? Cause well, I think, like the big debate, not debate, but yeah. like the tension yesterday was, is so why, like the question you asked, like why is David even being brought up here? Um, because what his disciples are doing is not against the law. And um, what David did was, it did break the law. Uh-huh. So why mm-hmm. bring that up? He's comparing one that that was against the law and, and to, to a situation now that isn't. Um, so there's there's like two things that are possible. And I don't even know necessarily which one I fully land on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if it's super important because uh, mm-hmm. I think maybe both of them are there regardless. Mm-hmm. But like the one is, so is Jesus condoning what David did and saying that was okay because his people needed to eat and God had mercy on him in this in this um, situation because God cares about the needs of his people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's okay to to break a command if it means the betterment of the people and taking care of like your your needs. Mm-hmm. Or is Jesus not saying that what David did was okay? Because he actually calls it out and says, hey, which is not lawful. Like he says, mm-hmm. this was not lawful that he did. Um, so is he not condoning it? And he's simply like just destroying their logic of like, hey, um, you guys are totally cool with what David did. Like nobody talks about that. You still hold him to this super high regard. Mm-hmm. You think that that he was amazing and great, and he actually like broke broke a law in this in this situation. And we're doing something that, and this is not against the law. Right, it's mm-hmm. something you've added. It's not what God commanded us to do, and you are up in arms about it. Mm-hmm. So your logic is off. Uh, Mm -hmm. you're cool with one person who actually broke God's law and you're mad at us for breaking your little command Mm -hmm. that you came up Mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So it can be one of the two. I I think I lean more towards him kind of destroying their logic. And also as we get into 27 Mm -hmm. and 28, I think that there's a really, there's an underlying thing that's happening in this, which has more to do with authority. I think Mm -hmm. you did a really good job explaining that and setting out the two differences Mm -hmm. um because whenever you're talking i'm like okay yeah 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 i get it and i'm following and i'm tracking and i don't think that i'm like ugh, i'm like is it okay to break a command like would have been okay like and then like for the need of the human but then that's like stretching i don't know i'm like it's it's hard for me to to sit in a world or sit in a place where i'm like yeah, Jesus is cool with breaking God's command. Yeah. Right. I just, I can't, I can't bring yeah. myself fully there. Mm-hmm. Right. No, yeah. and I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have anything else for 26 or 25, 26? Oh, go for it. Um, I was just going to say that uh, it says in the time of Abiah, 
Abiathar? Abiathar. Abiathar. Yeah. <laughs> you said it different earlier. <laughs> I don't think I did. We can replay though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come down to the bottom of this. Anyways, um, Abiathar, the high priest, um, which actually, like it says in the, in the time of Abiathar, right? Yes, in the time of Abiathar, because it was actually uh, Ahimelech? Or was Ahimelech. it Abimelech? No, Ahimelech. Ahimelech. It was actually like the whole situation with David was with Ahimelech, the high priest. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and kind of what the ESV study Bible landed on was that this is specifically saying in the time of Ab- Abiathar, because they, like people would have known uh, more about Abiathar. He was more well known. Um, so people would have been like, oh yes, okay, I know the I know the time period he was talking mm-hmm. about, even though it was actually Ahimelech. Um, that he did this, that he did this with, but Ahimelech was shortly killed after this because of what he did for David. So Abithar would have been right after him. So it was in that time period, you know. Wow. So that was. Uh, I'm assuming that's that's why uh, Mark said that. That's good. Yep, just a little thing. No, it's good. Twenty-seven and twenty-eight. So the thing that I was getting at earlier with these next two verses that I think kind of helps us come up with a solution for why Jesus brings up this story is in that, in that 28. So, so the son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. And Stephanie mentioned it earlier where there's a big emphasis on authority of Jesus declaring his authority, Mm -hmm. um, son of man, son of God. Um, he's making it well known in almost every situation where he has like conflict with the Pharisees of like, hey, who are you to question me? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the son of God. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, I think in part of what uh, he's doing in this is not is not condoning what David did, but he's saying like you are, you're holding these different standards and God is the only one who gets to say what is law and what isn't mm-hmm. law. And in this situation, you're coming coming at us and you're coming at the son of God and mm-hmm. saying, hey, why are you letting them do this? And he's like, hey, you're cool with what you did, what, what David did. You don't say anything about that, but you're mad because we're come, we're, that we defied your law mm-hmm. and you don't get to say what's law and what's not law. You don't get mm-hmm. to say what's good and what's bad. The only one who does is God. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is like when you really like you get that last verse of of that section right there, it kind of ties it all together of Jesus's main point was not necessarily anything to even do with the David story, but mm-hmm. more to do with like their logic mm-hmm. and the way they thought of themselves. And they held themselves to such a high regard that they thought that they could create things because they knew it better than everyone else and they were smarter than everyone else. Mm-hmm. And and Jesus is simply saying, you don't have the authority to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Only I do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like they're trying to put all of this legalism on him yep. and like putting a whole bunch of burdens and lo- like unbearable loads for them to carry. Yep. And Jesus is like, hey, no. Like, this is not what this is about. And I love the part where it says the Sabbath was made for man, Mm -hmm. not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was created for our enjoyment, um, not for it to be this day that is full of legalism and restrictions. Mm -hmm. And it's a day that we're supposed to enjoy to have rest and sitting with the Lord. Yeah. And like, I had listened to a really good podcast a while back. I mean, it was a long time ago. I always want to say her name wrong, but it's Jenny Allen. Um, and she had John Mark Comer on it. And he was talking about Sabbath and how his son, his Sabbath looks completely different than the rest of the families because he isn't like basically extroverted and he enjoys being around people. That is what fuels him and like makes him excited. Mm-hmm. And so where he wouldn't necessarily sit at home all day in the quiet and with lights off and all of that, he would actually be out and doing things yeah. because it's what you find joy in the Lord. Like, Mm -hmm. and I I just thought that was really good because not everybody's Sabbath can look the same Mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. um, There was a good uh, kind of definition in the ESV study Bible. Jesus states that Sabbath is meant to be a gift for man for physical and spiritual refreshment. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I also think this is something that's really important is that like, 
something I said yesterday that wasn't like completely correct was like, okay, well, as long as like for Sabbath, um, as long as you're doing something that like, oh gosh, I don't remember how I worded it. Kind of like diminishing the seriousness of Sabbath Mm -hmm. is kind of along the words as I was saying. And it's like, God never does like diminish the seriousness of how important a Sabbath is. Like there's reasons why he had such strict, like, you know, laws about keeping the Sabbath in the Old Testament because it's so necessary, Mm -hmm. you know, like, so I think it's really, I think it's really awesome that like we serve a God that like basically has to like get through our thick skulls as humans, like (laughs) practice Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Like you need this, this is for you, Mm -hmm. right? It's not meant, it's not meant to like, you know, like exhaust you. This is meant to be a something that you do to bring refreshment. Mm -hmm. Like you need to do this. And God was very serious about that in the Old Testament. Like, you got to do this, guys. Yeah. Nathan brought it up. Like, how cool is our God? Like, day six, he, so God creates the world. And Mm -hmm. by day six, he creates man. And then by day seven, he has him rest. Like, his first day, and he's like, okay, you know what you're going to do? You're going to rest. Like, you're going to enjoy my creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then, you know, we also do have where work was there before even the fall. So I just, Mm -hmm. like, that's another thing. But anyhow. Yeah. It's almost like you can't, you can't fully work until you have a day of rest. Almost it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. I think. That was a cool cool. thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. What else you got, Morgan? Um, I mean, yeah, the only other thing was just the importance of like what the purpose of Sabbath was. And it was supposed to be a blessing and a gift. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees turned it into the opposite of that. So Mm -hmm. Sabbath meant to be for rest, meant to be a gift. And they created so many extra biblical laws around it, these extra religious practices around it, that they made the Sabbath a job. Um, And I think that right there is like at the heart of of why Jesus is upset about yeah. what they're doing mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. one, they don't have the authority to do it. And two, they completely destroyed the gift that, mm-hmm. that God intended for them to be rest yeah. and turned it into work. That's yep. really good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything you guys want to add? What are you excited about? Hmm. I mean, just like, just like I said earlier, you know, what, <laughs> What kind of God do we have that genuinely wants rest for us? You know, like you, when you think about a God, you think about how, like, how can I make like minions that just follow me or that just do things for me that I want done, you know, and we serve a God that's like, I love you so much that I want you to have a day where you just take a day off, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like we serve, we serve a God that genuinely wants us to find refreshment for our souls Mm. right and that refreshment's found in him you know it's just like man it's like if you need any evidence that god is that god's real like that's that's what he wants for us Mm. that's what that's something he wants for us it's like gosh it's good Mm -hmm. all right that's all I have. That's all you got. That's all I got. I think you guys said everything that yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. It's a good conversation. For sure. Mm-hmm. Nathan's going to blow it out of the park. Yeah. It's going to oh, be yeah. great. Blow I can't it wait. out of the park. Yeah. You don't know sports terms. What's it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. <laughs> what is it? We'll correct you later. <laughs> no, that's how correct it now. What is it? Just knock it out of the park. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's okay. It's okay. I. I, I, I totally got I tried, it. I yeah. tried. I tried. Yeah. Do you even know what sport that would refer to? Baseball. Okay. Right? Good. You're yes. halfway there. Good yeah. job. Good job. I did it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, cool, cool. Well, we are thankful you joined us today. Um, yep. If you have any questions, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> like JC and Parker are over there laughing at me, and I'm like just trying to do it. Okay. <laughs> Um, you can email us at warehouse at cornerstone.team. I can't talk. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yep. Is that it? Is that normally what all we say? Questions, concerns, make sure to send us like questions about the scripture, about what we mm-hmm. talked about. And like we always say, please send in like fun questions we can intro right, this please. with. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for finishing that out. Yeah. <laughs> Parker, thanks for joining us again. Absolutely. Peace out, Girl Scout. Mm, I'm a boy. Oh. <laughs> 
Alrighty, the warehouse <laughs> is closed. <laughs>